One UPDF officer was killed, two police officers and one soldier injured in a surprise Sunday night attack on Gulu barracks that lasted close to 30 minutes. Police has not revealed the identities of the injured who are now receiving treatment at the 4th Division Army Barracks. The Army Public Relations Officer Hassan Kato said the attackers abandoned five SMG rifles and one PK machine gun believed to have been stolen during the recent raid on Opit Detach. Weapons which were captured yesterday in a joint operation led by the police and EPDF when a non gunman came and attacked the central police station. The attack was foiled because uh, our EPDF and the police put up a spirited fight and we passed back the enemy. Uh, we appeal to the community to be calm because the situation has been calmed. There's no need, no need to worry. However, they can as well cooperate with us, the police and security operatives, to provide timely and accurate information so that we can succeed more in this operation. <laughs> The attackers also abandoned a pickup vehicle registration number UAF 350Q, which was loaded with a recovered ammunition after being hit with several bullets. Police and the army claims that none of the attackers has been apprehended, but investigations are ongoing to establish the motive of the attack. However, observed guns are not new, which suggested that circumstances surrounding the attack still need more investigations. Unconfirmed reports say that the attackers had tried to rescue Owola Dan, the UPC Deputy Secretary for Mobilization, who was arrested by police on Wednesday in Gulu Municipality on allegations of being linked to last month's raid on a UPDF detach in Opie Trading Center. Yeah, because their aim was to come and rescue. You know, our aim, number one, was to dispel and make sure that that rescue is not successful. The raid then left a UPDF soldier, Alphonse Ojara, and a five-year-old boy dead, while eight guns and unspecified amount of ammunition seized. Bushra Namirimo, Layo Roni. The state of security in the country is what we want to particularly pay attention to. We have quite a number of arrests that have been made relating to rebel activities in the country. And we want to dig deep into that. Just like I said earlier on, security remains security at whatever stage. And we have to be very conscious. And we have the UPDF spokesperson right in studio, Lieutenant Kano Pate and Kunda here to answer some of those questions you want. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good Thank morning. you for sparing us time. Good morning, Afandi. Pleasure. Very interesting. But I would just want to say, maybe holistically, we start with, what do you look at the security situation in Uganda being currently in the country? Well, I, I think the country is relatively calm. Mm. Um, relatively calm in the sense that up until a couple of days ago, the entire space was was secure the mm. entire country was secure and so this that we may have seen or heard in gulu and in kampala some of these arrests mm. i think there are efforts in the right direction but otherwise generally the, the country is relatively calm and um i can report now that we've been able for example to bring the situation in gulu back to normal mm. um and I just got a message from my PRO and he was like, you know what, people are back to business here. Okay. It's, 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 it's all normal. Well, that sounds said, positive. But mm -hmm. maybe one would want to take you back. Mm -hmm. when, when, when an incident like that happens, there is always contradicting information that goes around. So many, you know, um, versions of what exactly happened. What exactly happened in Gulu on Sunday night? Well, it's, um, I think it was an offshoot of what happened in Opit sometime on the 27th. You remember there was an attack on a local defense unit detachment mm -hmm. and these characters made away with um, some guns, some rifles. Uh, during that time, we arrested one of their leaders called Ola Dan, mm. who happens to be the deputy secretary general for mobilization in, in UPC, 
in Uganda People's Congress. So during the sand attack, these criminal gangs thought they would rescue him from Gulu Police Station. Okay. So the attack was on Gulu Police Station. Okay. Uh, fortunately, we had been tipped off, and our soldiers were on the alert, and we were able to, to foil the attack. But unfortunately, unfortunately, mm. people who had not been part of the of the battle, the gun battle, mm. including one Edema Moses, mm. who was returning from a funeral, from a burial in Weary, mm. caught up in crossfire and died. Mm. Then okay. we had six others injured on the same vehicle that, that was coming from a burial. So 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 we lost we lost a, a person. And then others were injured. But we've recovered all the guns. Okay. Up until this morning, the latest report I have is that we got six rifles and one machine gun. These characters were also carrying arrows. Yeah. And um, fortunately, again, we have arrested the attackers, including the commander, David O'Peel. When you get to say you were so, tipped off and uh, you were ready, uh, does this does this mean um, you you exactly knew the day the the, the, the incident was uh, going to happen, or did you have prior information about the organization of this so-called gang? Actually, actually, what happened was we had been following this criminal gang since the attack on Opit. We had been following them, so we had information. Their intention was to attack a police station and rescue a colleague. So we. we we, not risky a colleague, we zeroed on the police station where their colleague was being held. Okay. And so that helped. Uh, and therefore, by, at the time when they came, we, we had really been ready. So, and this is very good. You see, it's, it's a popular intelligence. And we got this from the public, from the civilians. They were giving us all this information, which is good. Uh, uh, Afande, mm. uh, you talk about thugs and, and gangs. Yeah. Uh, uh, people would love to know, if these are criminal gangs, how organized are they that they can have all those sorts of uh, ammunition? Well, <laughs> first of all, the, you see, it, they are not organized. If they are organized, if they are under command, they, they wouldn't have, in, in a rather amateurish way, attacked a, a police station. Because for now we, we can deduce that it appears they thought they were going to play a film. They came in a pickup with their rifles. And then they, they didn't know how to go about it. But also, but also when uh, the, the current president went, to the, uh, in one of your books, he yeah. writes <laughs> that he went in a pickup yeah. to make an attack. Yes. And, and, and you see, this is what is playing out. How different is it that the other <laughs> narrative uh, succeeded later after five years? Yeah. Yeah. This narrative cannot access, and, and, and you're calling see, it a movie. And no, you see, what mm. happens is, if, mm. if you decide to do that, mm. then you must succeed and defend your approach. This time around, they failed. Mm. But the point here, I think what we need to learn is, um, first of all, they're making a point. They're sending a message. They're saying, you know what? We know you're organized. We know you're not a small force. We know you're stronger. But we are daringly attacking you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think government, need, we need, as security actors, we need to learn from this. Mm. What is this that is giving strength to actors as amateurish as they are to attack a security installation. I'm, I'm seeing this, this is the point. Exactly. Yeah. I, but while you would love you to expound on it, there is some interest on the social media yeah. uh, that I'm seeing. Why are you calling them gangs? Gangs. Well, <laughs> because they are. Mm. And that's what we have to call them. Mm. Why do we call them gangs? You know, the, the beauty of this is that we already have some of them. Six have been arrested, including their leader. The, the leader, the commander of the Sunday attack has been arrested. So they are telling us what they are. I, I, I cannot reveal much of the information, but I can also tell you that before they attacked, they actually visited a shrine somewhere in Kitgum, mm -hmm. and they were blessed by some leader. Now, now, now but, but when you start such kind of, uh, that's not military, that's not tactics. That's so, so you can see they really, really lost into their bizarre ways. They okay. think they can attack.
Paddy, exactly. we've seen these repeated mm -hmm. attacks on um, security detachments. Mm -hmm. Do, would we get to say that the people have lost fear or even respect for state authority? I, I, I do not think so. Because you see what, what, what happens. Like, like in, in the Cassese attacks, mm -hmm. you, saw, you saw how disorganized they were. Unfortunately, we end up losing people. Some lives, yeah. I, I do not think, in my view, that the public has lost confidence in the security actors. Because, you see, these are lone actions. These are lone actors. They come out in, 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 a, in a rather amateurish way, like I said, and, and they lose the plot. Just on that. So, I, I don't think... I don't, I, I don't think know why you a... chose the word disorganized mm -hmm. and amateurish. Mm -hmm. when, when the so disorganized and amateur mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. can put up that spirited fight against a highly bankrolled army... I, an army that has a lot of uh, money in terms of intelligence. We saw the, the, mm. the, what played out in Kasese. Mm. It is not take one day or two days. Mm. It, it kept on moving and on. So, mm. so mm. I, 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 can you fix, uh, place the dots for us? No, on... the, <laughs> you, you see again, mm. I'm happy you, you're talking about intelligence. The reason we are able to deal with this situation in Kulu is because we had good intelligence. That must be understood. In, in, in Kasesef, I can tell you that it was ethno-nationalism. Mm -hmm. It was ethno-nationalism. And we have explained this point before. So, in a, in a country like ours that is still developing, you still have situations, for example, where the professor of physics, Isaac Newton, mm -hmm. thought that by smearing sheer nut butter, sheer nut oil, Mm -hmm. On himself, he would he would dodge bullets, mm -hmm. and he supported Ali Salakwena, and until you know what happened, you know the story. So we we have some of these parochial beliefs that still come along as we attempt to change this country, because otherwise, how do you explain somebody going into a shrine before they attack, and then before they even attack? They, they can't understand how to go about it. They are dropping all the guns and running away in this area. Okay. It tells you that the, some sections of our country are really still lost in some of these beliefs, but, but they, are, they are not scientific. Well, if I would just move you away from the Gulu attacks, mm -hmm. we've had several arrests that have been made yes. in relation to rebel activities, including Nakawa's um, Honorable Michael Kabas Guruka. Yes, yes. How many so far have been arrested apart from him in relation to rebel activities? Well, quite a number. I, I cannot put a figure because even by yesterday we picked some three other characters. Um, but what I can confirm is that these arrests are informed by intelligence, including arrests of some of our officers, including Colonel Dan, o, Dan Opito, mm -hmm. uh, who was arrested the other day. This started when we made arrests in Chengera. Um, and arrested one Captain Oja Andrew, whose group fortunately has been able to reveal a lot of information. It led to the arrest of the of the MP and later on the, the colonel. Um, some actors in the police have also been arrested. Uh, and therefore, this was part of the plan by these actors, because the plan was get organized, pick some arms working with some actors in the security agencies, conduct attacks on police stations, conduct attacks on military installations, and create a situation that the, the country is going haywire. Mm -hmm. And we got this information early enough. So these arrests are very, very focused, and we are investigating. What I can tell you is that we, we haven't found a, a clear link between these arrests that were made in Kampala mm -hmm. and the attack in Gulu. Okay. And that's the reason we don't want to make conclusions. We okay. are saying we don't see any indications that this is a rebel group. There is no rebellion. And at this, this point, this I would is, also ask, yeah. we, we, when we talk about Gulu, we are specifically looking at what happened on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. But just yesterday, across social media, this is the easiest way people have started getting information. Yes. There was reports of yet another shoot. It could have been just one gunshot or whatever, yeah. but there were such reports. Do I you have information that. to that I in the late that. evening? I actually saw that on Chimp's, uh, Chimp reports. Mm -hmm. and I, took, I made the effort to contact Gulu 
and they explained it to me. That was at a time when they are attempting to arrest the suspects. Yesterday we picked five suspects in total, mm -hmm. and one of them surrendered on his own. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the ones we picked earlier were a bit stubborn, and that attracted some shooting. And obviously shooting is not is something good people would want to see. Mm -hmm. I, 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 having been through a very bad conflict for over 20 years. So th that's what happened. During the attempt to arrest the suspects, mm -hmm. they resisted and there was some shooting. But now it's come. Okay. I've got reports from our PRO and I spoke to the commander. I said, it's all come now. Okay. But we're on the line. I want to take you back slightly. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've just mentioned here that you, these arrests yeah. were based on intelligence. Yes. You've been picking people here and there. And, uh, and years gone by, or when, when the, the talk of uh, PRA came up, yeah. there, there were arrests that were made. Uh, uh, Kiza Besija was linked to these um, uh, treason charges. I mean, this uh, kind of attempt to overthrow this government. We see the court processes uh, take shape. Yes. The case is thrown out. What is indeed the normal talk? Is it uh, that's why the people interpret it to be that these are guests just to curtail the other part of the political uh, bargain? And, and you know what, mm -mm. Dalton? Yes. Somebody called me yesterday and they said, We think you guys are creating this situation. Mm -hmm. We think you're stage managing this situation. I said, But uh, why arrest D Dano Pito, not any other colonel? Or why arrest Captain Andrew Ja? Not any other captain. We have also arrested the major. You also arrested people in Mbuya and they disappeared. So there is, no, there is a catalogue of things no, that no, people no, no, qualify. We, we still have them actually. Mm. We still have them. They have been undergoing trial. But the point I'm making, we do not see any indications at the moment that these groups are linked to the defiance campaign. Okay. Obviously, an act of attacking an act of attacking a security installation is an act of defiance. Mm -hmm. But we don't see any clear link between what they did and the actions of some of these political actors. So we cannot, we cannot connect that. Not until we have investigated and fully discovered that they are linked, shall we be able to tell the country what this is. But Apart is from linking the clear. two and, and rebel activities, mm -hmm. do you see any political connotations to the kind of... Uh, things happening in the country. Let's take a look at the attacks. Let's take a look at the various arrests that have been made. Oh, yes. You see, all politics is local. And that's what the English say, that mm. all politics is local. All these actions, all, all these acts, the attack on Gulu, as a matter of fact, cannot lack the political appeal to it. There must be some political dimension mm -hmm. to the attack. The arrests we are making are an attempt to stop a group that is trying to disorganize the political order. All right. so, so as a matter of fact, there is some political dimension to this. Okay. But what we don't want to, to appear to be doing is... Political witch hunt. We are not witch hunting anyone. We want some kind of systematic investigation so that when we come out to say some political actors were behind this, we have evidence. Allow me to reconstruct um, the security situation of this country uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have uh, um, dignitaries. We have yes. uh, actually Cassis attacks. Yeah. We have dignitaries that come into this country yeah. and all roads are blocked never in this country like that. <laughs> For the first time yeah. uh, in, the, mm -hmm. the, in the years I've lived on, uh, in this country. Yeah. And, and, and before we know it, uh, we see things in Gulu. Are we living on a time bomb? Because there, there, there are indicators that all is not well. <laughs> well uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how you come to such conclusions. But I know when these visitors were here, the, I mean, very many people were inconvenienced. I read stories on the social media that some people missed their flights, mm -hmm. including tourists who had come here, brought their money, and spent it in our country, and now they couldn't fly back because the roads were blocked. That's not good. But I can also tell you that people had planned to ashamed this country. All right. And therefore, 
the actions that were taken by the security forces actually saved the bigger face of this country. I was equally affected. I live along Entebbe Road. I couldn't move. So the, s some of these situations that happen in our country must be understood in the bigger context. We are not an island. We, we, how do, this, I think this was the first time the head of state of South Korea was visiting Uganda. Yes. This was probably the first time the Turkish president was visiting Uganda. You don't want them to come here. And they are being pelted stones. You, do, you don't want that. Now, we, we had this intelligence that some actors wanted to disorganize the visit. And so traffic police took the actions they took to ensure that there was free flow of traffic. I know some actors in the public were inconvenienced, but that is now gone. We should understand that we have a bigger face as a country to keep in light of the international activity mm -hmm. than our local politics. And that's, that's the picture sometimes we lose. So the center is not as holding as it used to? No, no we are in charge. Mm. There, there, there should be no doubt there. Mm. And again, you see, when, when we make these arrests, for example, like, like the ones we've made, mm. we, we are sending one point that our systems are working. Like you did arrest the 22 PRA, but on the case, never matured. No, it did. Mm. Because we, 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 the point we made in the arrest of the PRA mm. suspects, mm. people are saying there was no PRA. Mm. You remember? There was, people and said there is no PRA. Prove. No, they, they, they came and said, we have been in the bush. <laughs> we have been, they took us through Rwanda, they mm. took us through mm. where, they mm. took us through here, they took... Uh, we've been there for so many months, over a year. Mm. We are happy we are back home. Unless they said there is an organization called PRA. But all said and done, I think our country is safe. Mm. We should have this belief that our country can remain safe. Paddy, I want to know, when you get to arrest someone with yes. ammunition, that definitely means it could be a, a, a connotation to rebel activity or whatever. How do you go about such a case? Uh, it's, it starts with investigations. And again, it doesn't matter who you are. If, whether you are a civilian or a security actor, for as long as you have been arrested in possession of military hardware or military stores, mm -hmm. you can still be tried, even in our mechanisms, the, the, the court martial. So it starts with investigations. And we have paid more attention now to being more thorough with our investigations because sometimes we've lost cases that we shouldn't lose. Mm -hmm. So intelligence is joint intelligence forces, it's police, uh, prisons, uh, UPDF working together. We are now focusing on making sure that we investigate these cases thoroughly well so that they are not lost in court. Now, through the investigations while mm -hmm. they are being done, I know a person yes. has to be kept somewhere. Which is the much more safer way to keep such people? And how well, do you, uh, anyway, how do you detain the suspects? Again, it depends. Like, in, in, in these arrests that we've made, uh, the suspects are kept in different locations. We have some of them in Makindia. We have some of them in police custody. Because again, if you're investigating a case of that nature, you don't want these suspects to interact. Yes. So you keep them separately. So they are kept in different places for purposes of facilitating investigation. When you keep them in a police cell where we also have any other, you know, I don't want to call them no more as, uh, criminals because a criminal is a criminal. Mm -hmm. um, isn't there any way such investigations are affected? Or why would no. you choose to keep particular ones in a police cell and others are taken to places like Makindi? No, it's, it's, is there a measure? No, it's in order. It's in order. Because the truth of the matter is that these investigations are conducted jointly. Because in the end, these, these are police cases. Police takes the lead in investigations. Mm -hmm. But when they need our support, because some of these characters are security officers, are PDF soldiers, for example, or officers, then we support them with information. 
So we help in the investigation. So it's, it, it's, it's not a problem at all that some of them are kept in different locations while others are in other locations. Because in the end, we are working towards the same goal. All right. Uh, but earlier on, you did talk about politics being having a connotation mm -hmm. to politics in all this that is happening in the country mm -hmm. and it's just a few months after the elections we know so many people who are still you know uh, talking about what happened yes. and coming to disagree or agree mm. with what exactly happened earlier on security installations had a mm. problem mm. with one group power 10 yes do we have any connection of these arrests to power 10 well, does it still exist anyway they are still there. It wasn't just Power 10, actually. We had Chifesi. You mm -hmm. remember Chifesi really became a problem here in the city. Yes. They were killing people. Uh, Power 10 remnants are still there. Um, but obviously, now this appears to be a shift. This appears to be a shift because initially there was concentration on Kampala by some of these groups which faces and others. Now, we see a group, a small group emerging in a different urban center and doing what they did. And, and, and now the, the intelligence we are getting is that they were blessed by some elder somewhere for the attack. Now, that's a different dimension. And this is the reason we are really taking keen interest in investigating this matter thoroughly well. So while it's true there could be a connection between the Kampala actors and the attackers in Gulu, it's something we don't want to conclude about at this stage until we have investigated. There happen to be a, 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 a rebel unit called uh, Revolutionary Forces for Liberation of Uganda. I find they yes. ever heard of it. Well, some of these groups uh, keep emerging. And linked to Kawasagiruka um, in 2012. I, 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 I would want to, to suggest mm. that some of these situations, we leave them to the investigators. I don't want to, to jeopardize because this is a case before the court. I don't want to appear prejudicial on this matter. Mm -hmm. And I would really propose that we, we leave it to the investigators. But do we have emerging rebel groups in the country that you are aware of? The, 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 they are really not rebel groups. I don't want to conclude that these are rebel groups. Mm. Why? Because they behave more or less like criminal gangs. So we don't want to make these conclusions. The transition, and, and the transition could be very easy and, and, and in a very short time from a rebel gang, I, I mean from a gang to, you know, mm. a rebel group. And when that happens, we will know. And we will treat them as such and we will tell the country what we are seeing. At what point in time would you get to think or determine that a group is a rebel group and just away from a mere gang? Well, th th again, that's, uh, those are technicalities, really, that mm. uh, now you can tell that this, is, this has become a rebel group. Mm. But one of the things is that the attacks have to be consistent, and they, they have to appear to have a network. They have to appear to have command and control. Mm. We don't see some of these characteristics in these groups. But, but uh, you mentioned earlier yes. that, uh, that the arrest, they first arrested the captain, the captain and the group led you to, to the canoe. Yes. That shows you that there is a network that is working more or less, more of what happened even in the, in the liberation uh, struggle, that there was di different networks that are working. Yet, you deliberately still call them a gang. No, no, and no, no. amateurish and disorganized. That, that's, that's because that's what they are. That's what we see now. Uh, because, for example, uh, who is their commander? Because before you say th this is a rebel group, you first point at some of these things. You say, who is commanding them? Hmm. What's their source what, why of, is of in the finance? Cell? Why is the colonel in the cell? Again, it's because we suspect that he has been involved in subversive activities. Okay. And uh, th that has been investigated. So we don't see some of these characteristics. We don't want mm. to, to, to declare to the country that this, this is a rebellion. 
because that's not what it is at this moment. Okay. Well, before we go, finally, yeah. I would want to say or yes. ask, is social media security threat? We did see the statement coming up due okay. to security reasons yeah. when we did see social media clamp down yes. during the elections yes. and during the times we've had president's visit. Is social media a threat to security in the country? Well, again, it, it depends on, on, on how you want to look at it. Because, honestly speaking, some of our colleagues, the way they act, what they post, what they say, you, 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 come, you want to come to a quick conclusion that sometimes they are very irresponsible in thinking about the, 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 the bigger good of the country. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, uh, the police chief, General Kari Kaihura, warned that the government would not hesitate acting within the ambits of the law and using agencies that are mandated and, and authorized, like the Uganda Communications Commission, to take action on irresponsible social media users. Because I want to tell you, there was an attack in America recently, in Orlando. Yes, yes. And on a club, you know the story, and 50 people died. Okay? How much of that did we see in, on social media? So, the, I, during the elections, let me give you an example. During the elections, we picked information that some actors wanted to post a picture that a prominent traditional leader in this country had been arrested and post that he was being dragged behind a Land Rover so that they can mobilize people to fight against this country, mm -hmm. this government. Mm -hmm. we, sp we, we got to know of that and we requested that traditional leader to help by showing up at some of the polling stations to show that he was actually free. Actually, to the benefit of our viewers. And, and, it's and, and, and it, it is the Kawaka Runa 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 We saw him going to... Well, well uh, you've I, just I, made you've, a big you've, revelation. You've got, a big, you've got the point. Mm. Mm. And how did we stop that? I'm, I'm very, very happy that the, the leader, the traditional leader, was very cooperative. Mm. And he, most, he moved out there and, and showed that he was actually free. That he hadn't been arrested, that he had... But we, we, we got hold of those pictures. Did you get hold of the individuals who were planning this? We, we, well, that's another story. Oh, okay. and, 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 and I'm very happy that we stopped that. So um, the, the point I'm making is that some of our actors, some of our mm. people, some of our, coll our colleagues on social media, honestly must act responsibly. All right. I know it's about where you're standing. Yeah. If, if, if they are standing on, on the platform that they want to oppose government, they may want to do such things. But I can tell you, this country is bigger than some of those things we think we can do mm. and, 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 and take the security into violence. All right, thank you very much, Paddy. It's been a pleasure coming pleasure. up to, you know, give such useful thank information so to the public. We've been speaking to the yes. US, uh, UPDF uh, spokesperson and hope mm -hmm. this information was very helpful to you as a Ugandan. Up yeah. next in our topical discussion, we still look at the issue of academic qualifications, where in a span of less than a week, two of the members of parliament have been thrown out by the high courts mm -hmm. in Uganda. We'll be right back with that discussion.